One of the things that Pastor Harper has instilled in me since I've been here is that God wants his people ready and not surprised. How many want to be ready? How many don't want to be surprised? How many get surprised sometimes? We kind of look at life and we say, this makes no sense at all. What in the world? Well, I want you to know something. <laughs> You're in good company. Because there's a lot of people in the Bible that felt that way. Like, what's going on, God? And I was reading, and I... I let me tell on myself for just a minute. I, I don't know if Pastor Harper's ever had this or any other minister, but you wonder, do I have the right message? Do I have the right thought? Boy, this just doesn't seem right, you know? And, and, and as I was praying that prayer the other day, God gave me a scripture. And so instead of starting on page one, I'm going to start on page two. <laughs> and it's in the book of Judges, chapter 6, 11 through 14. And it says, And it came to pass, and there came an angel of the Lord, and sat down under an oak tree, which is an Ophrah, that pertaineth to Joash, the battleship, and his son Gideon, threshing wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said, Hey, Gideon, the Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why is all this stuff happening? This just doesn't make sense. Why is all this craziness going? You made us promises, and it sure does seem like you have forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites, our enemy. Did you ever feel that way? What in the world's going on? And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning, is that sometimes it seems like life gets crazy, and we just kind of look around and we say, what's going on? You ever been there? Or if you're, if you're Brother Rick, you say, why, Lord? Why is this happening? Why, what, what's this all about? What's, what's this going to prove? What's this, what's this going to build? What's this going to help? I say that a lot. <laughs> and God said to Gideon, have not I sent you? Well, I want to tell you right off the bat that if you're here this morning, God knows where you're at. God knows who you are. And whether you believe it or not, God loves you. And even though your life may seem upside down and inside out and broken and shattered and cracked and just a mess how many lives have maybe you're not there now but you've been there <laughs> or maybe you're there <laughs> and you just kind of look and you say what's going on God you, you see Job was in that place how many know Job Job was in that place he had it going on, man. He got a good business. He had a great family. He had everything going on. He was looked up to. He was well respected. People listened to what he had to say. And then all of a sudden, bam. And he looked around and he looked to the east and he looked to the west and he looked up and he looked down and he looked and he couldn't find God. And I'm sure one of the statements he made was, What's going on, God? <laughs> Why is this happening to me? Did you ever say that? Why me, God? <laughs> what in the world is going on? Job finally had to say that, you know, it doesn't matter that I can see him or not. I know that he knows where I'm at. And if you don't get anything out of the lesson this morning, get that. It doesn't matter what you know or what you think. It matters the fact that God knows, God sees, and God cares. Well, I don't feel like God cares. Well, he does. 
And sometimes we can't go by our feelings because our feelings are very deceptive and very, very much not always in the will of God. We were reading a scripture in the book of Micah this morning in class, and it said that God wanted us to walk by sight and walk by feeling and walk by emotion, seventh chapter. No, 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 it didn't say that, did it? Let me correct it. He said, walk humbly, do justly, and love mercy. You see, sometimes in our walk with God, it's got absolutely, absolutely nothing to do with how I feel or what I think. Because how I feel today, at this very moment, is going to be very different than how I feel 20 minutes from now. <laughs> sometimes. Right? Right? And what makes no sense to me at all right now may make very much sense to me in the weeks to come. I was thinking about Moses. How many know who Moses is? How many knows how, how bad Moses messed up? Can you all hear me? Can you hear me back there? Am I loud enough or do I need the mic? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or not. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, Moses killed a guy. And he had to go running. And guess where he ran to? Yeah, he did, didn't he? He ran to a desert. The backside of the mountain, I believe, is what it's called. But it was a desert place. How many have ever been in a desert place? You know, that, that place in life that's dry and arid and there's nothing going on and there's no life, it seems, and there's no food, it seems, and there's no deliverance, it seems, and you're just in a desert place. Sometimes we get there in life, don't we? Just a place in life that just seems like, man, God's not for me. God's not with me God's not helping me here he's he's put me in this place and for me to die that's how Israel felt I don't know that that's how Moses felt but Moses was on the backside of a mountain in a desert place feeding somebody else's sheep wondering why did I do what I did I'm sure <laughs> How many know who Peter is? How many knows how, how, <laughs> I'm not even going to say it, Pastor Harper. Peter was always getting himself in trouble, wasn't he? Let's just leave it at that. And they were in a ship one time. How many have been in a, in a boat in a storm on Lake Erie? Did it make you nervous, <laughs> to say the least? I was on a ship in a storm in Lake Erie that was 650 foot long and 60 foot wide, and I was nervous. Okay, I was scared. <laughs> and I was in a ship, and the waves were hitting me in the head. Can't imagine being in a boat. But here was Peter in a boat in a mighty storm. And he saw this figure walking on the water, and he got all glad and happy because he knew it was Jesus. No, no he didn't. <laughs> no he didn't. He got scared. Life ever scare you? Life ever make you t stop and take a pause and <gasps> take your breath away? And Jesus said, come on. It's me. Don't be afraid, Peter. It's just me. Come on. And as long as his focus was on Jesus, he was okay. But the second he got his focus off of Jesus, what did he say? Lord, save me. Because <laughs> he got afraid of the storm, and he got afraid of what was going on in his life, and he got afraid of what was happening. Sometimes we get that way. Can, 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 can we just be honest with ourselves this morning? Sometimes life gets scary, and, and sometimes we don't see what God is doing, and sometimes we can't see God working in our lives, and sometimes we just don't have a clue. 
I want, to re- I want you to rest your mind in this, that God always knows what's best for you. And he knows what's best for me. And sometimes we have to go through these places in life to realize I can't fix myself, but I serve one that can fix me. I can't put things back together, but I serve one that can, and he'll do it better than I could ever do it. I can't make things grow, but I serve one that can make things grow even in an arid, dry place. (laughs) I was thinking, how many have heard the expression, I'm on a mountaintop with God? You know, I'm not exactly sure where that came from, Brother Harper, but when I look at a mountaintop, it's cold and air, it, it, there's no life, the, the, things can't even grow. And then you've got to be afraid of every step you take. And, and, and of course, you know, you can't even breathe up there. You have to have oxygen. But we're on a mountaintop. I don't know, sometimes I think in the valley where the river's flowing and the grass is lush and there's life and there's all things going on. Maybe we got it backwards. I don't know, I'm just thinking, just just Brother Rick thinking, be afraid. (laughs) But God knows what we need and when we need it. And at that moment, Peter needed to know that his God would be with him no matter where he was at, no matter what he was doing, and no matter what was going on, God would never leave him in the water to perish. Unfortunately, and may I say this, he didn't promise we wouldn't have floods come into our lives. He just promised they wouldn't kill us. He didn't promise there wouldn't be fires in our life. He just promised they wouldn't burn us. What am I saying? He didn't promise you wouldn't go into a desert place. He didn't promise that you wouldn't go into a hard place in life. He just promised that he'd never leave you or forsake you. He told the children of Israel and he told Moses in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7, For the Lord God hath blessed thee in all thy works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. He knows your walk. He knows where you're at. I don't care if it's a great wilderness that's going on in your life. God knows where you're at. I don't care if it's a dry place in your life. God knows where you're at. God knows how to bless you. God knows how to lift you. God knows how to take care of you. Now, to make some unhappy, kind of sort of me included, their clothes never wore out. Their shoes never wore out. That's kind of upsetting. Because I like new clothes and new shoes all the time. (laughs) But they never wore out for Israel, for Moses. Not only that, they never really got hungry. God always supplied their need in their life. And I don't care where you find yourself out today. I don't care what's going on in your life today. God is there and he's supplying the need even if you can't see it. God's right there supplying the need in your life. God's right there working things. David said in Psalms 1 through 5, In thee, O Lord, will I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. You are my strong habitation. You are my resort. You are the one that saves me. You are my rock and you are my fortress and you are the one that delivers me. You, God. I say that because David, he found himself in some places, didn't he? In caves, hiding, in desert places, and out in the back 40 feet and taking care of daddy's sheep. He found himself in places that I wondered sometimes if he'd looked around. I remember the story one time where David was in a cave with, I think it was 400 of his men, and he felt all alone. And nobody was there to encourage him. 
I want to encourage you this morning. God is with you. If you're here this morning, know that God is with you. God cares about you. He's calling you. He, he told Gideon, have not the Lord sent you? Has not the Lord called you? Has not God wanted, was wanting to use you? Wherever you're at, you feel totally helpless and totally worthless. Know this for sure, that God called you this morning. And God knows you by name. And he loves you. Sometimes, Paul told Timothy, in the, in the book of 2 Timothy 2 and 3, that we have to endure, we have to endure hardness as a good soldier. Sometimes it's just not easy. But you see, we can't go by our emotions and by our feelings. We have to go by what? We have to go by the word of God. It's the only thing that doesn't fail. It's the only thing that stood the test of time. It's the only thing that's been tried seven times and found perfect. Not my word. His word. Not my feeling. His word. Mm. Mm. Sometimes I feel... Like God just wants to destroy me and things get broken out of my life and things slip and, and things fall and things seems like life is just utterly, utterly destroyed. And as I look back in my experiences, I have found that the things that have fallen off and the things that I thought were broken were just pieces of a puzzle that were just lost and and I wondered why and, and and all of a sudden I look at the puzzle and it's better than it was before does that make sense sometimes God takes things out of our life that are hurting us and we don't realize they're hurting us sometimes God takes things out of our life that need to be taken out so that he can put something else in that will cause us to be better and cause us to do what he wants us to do Hebrews chapter 6, it's talking about Abraham. How many know who Abraham is? Do you know Abraham used to make false gods? He made idols. Oh, he had a good life in the land of the Chaldees, the, in the land of Ur. Oh, he had a good life. He, 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 he had it all together. And God called him and said, Abraham, I want you to leave this people. I want you to come out. I want you to follow me. I want you to go with me. And, and Abraham, I don't know. I don't know if Abraham thought about it or not. I don't know. There's no Bible. But if you tell me to leave a perfectly good job to go walk in the wilderness, yeah, I'm going to kind of laugh too. <laughs> I had something. Sister Linda fed me something last night. <laughs> This can't be right. This makes no sense at all. He didn't know what the future held. He didn't know what was going on. He didn't know what God had called him to. And sometimes we don't know what God calls us to. And sometimes we don't know what God's doing in our life. And we just have to trust in him. And that's what the psalmist was saying. God, my life's a mess. Life's crazy. Life's insane. It doesn't make sense. But I trust in you. You're my rock. You're my fortress. You're my place I stand on and I will not slip. You're the one that holds me steady. L let me ask you a question. And then we'll get back to Abraham. How many knows who Jesus was? Silly question, huh? You know Jesus was driven into the wilderness, into a desert place, just for the fun of it. No, he wasn't. He didn't eat for 40 days. That's enough to make my life crazy. <laughs> and he wasn't there for his health. 
He, he was there for, to show us, I think, as I look on it, this is just from Brother Rick's perspective, which we all know is a little, just a little off kilter. Okay, 10 degrees, <laughs> maybe 20. I think it was there not to show us the devil tempted him and that you can go 40 days without eating, Lord forbid, <laughs> but that even in a desert place, God will be with you. God knows where you're at. And even though Jesus was in a desert place, it didn't stop him from serving God. It didn't stop him from worshiping his Father. It didn't stop him from believing what the Word of God said. And when the devil began to tempt him, what was his comeback? The Word says, it's written. I don't care if I'm in a desert place or not, it's written. I don't care if my life's falling apart right now, it's written. I don't care if things seem fractured and broken, it's written. The Word of God says, you see, sometimes we just got to understand that the Bible says, Paul was telling Timothy, that the righteous shall suffer persecution. They're going to have some hard times in their life. It's going to have ups and downs, mountains and valleys, maybe, anyhow. Things are going to go awry. Things are going to go crazy. Things are not going to look the way they should look. But no one thing, no one thing for sure, walk with God by the Word of God and by the Spirit of God and not by your feelings. Because our feelings are deceptive. Second Timothy 3 verse 14 says, Continue in the things that thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing whom thou hast learned them from. Thank God we have a pastor that teaches us to look, be aware, be ready, don't be stupid, don't follow on dumbly. Don't follow on. Just check out the Word of God. One of the things that I said to him when I first started here was that I, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> now he feels sorry for him. Because <laughs> he said, yeah, I want you as my saint. <laughs> and, and that was that I'm going to check every word you say. I don't believe a word you say. I'm going to check every word you said. You know what his comeback was? And, and let me just say it in Brother Rick's language. Don't worry me. Check me. Go ahead. Because I'm going to give you the word of God, whether you like it or not. And he has. And sometimes, I'll be honest, sometimes I don't like it. Sometimes it just irritates me, and he thinks I'm a grace developer. But I've learned one thing. He's going to tell me what the Word of God says, whether I like it or not. And he's going to do it in such a gentle way. I remember my dad was the pastor of the church in West Virginia, and he'd slap me across the face spiritually, and I wouldn't even know I was slapped until I was driving away. And then I would realize, oh, he just hit me. <laughs> and I would have to pull over and I would start crying because the Spirit of God was so strong. Well, sometimes that's how Pastor Harper is. He'll tell us things and don't just take it lightly. Think about it. Apply it. And you might realize he's talking to your heart. And one of the things he always wants us to know, at least I think he does, is that God loves you. And that God cares about you. And I was reading a scripture the other day again. It says, though a just man falls seven times, he gets back up. You, you see, falling isn't the problem. That's not the failure. I think not getting up is the failure. Because we all fall and come short of the glory of God, don't we? We all come short just a little bit. Maybe you not so much, but me. We all come short, and we need the presence of God to come into our life and somehow 
put it back together. And, and I don't know where you're at with God, and I don't know what's going on, but I want you to understand more than once, more than just in Hebrews that we're all so familiar with, it says that I will never, I will never leave you or forsake you, Hebrews 13.5. 1 Samuel 12, 22 says, For the Lord will not forsake his people. <laughs> I like this scripture. For he is, for his great name's sake, because it pleased the Lord to make you his. I don't know, maybe you don't feel like you belong to God today. But let me reassure you that you're not here by accident, and neither am I. God called us to him, through him, to him. And he wants us to know that whatever's going on in your life, number one, I will never, I will never leave you or forsake you, number one. Number two, it pleased me to call you. It pleased me to call you mine. It pleased me to dwell in you. It pleased me to wash your sins away. It pleased me to fill you with the Holy Ghost. It pleased me to make you stand. It pleased me to help you walk. It pleased me to help you become what I want you to be. So if I can say this respectfully, sometimes we just have to shut up and walk like men. That's kind of a rude way to put it. I could say shut up and suck it up, buttercup. But Sister Linda said if I say that one more time, she's going to hit me in the knee and say suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> but sometimes we have to realize life doesn't go by my emotions and my feelings. Life goes by the word of God. And I have to trust the word of God no matter what's going on in my life. Back to Abraham. You thought I forgot, didn't you? Abraham began to follow God, and even his wife questioned him. I mean, I'm sure they had quite a few discussions. <laughs> Maybe not so quiet. <laughs> but he said he endured, he pursued, he walked, he didn't quit. Until he received the promise. God made me a promise. I believe that word. God said something to me. I believe that word. And sometimes God will speak to us. And it seems like that word falls to the ground. But I want you to know that that word never falls to the ground. Can you imagine... I probably should walk off the platform for this one. <laughs> Can you imagine being Noah and God saying, build an ark? It's never rained before. Build an ark. I'm going to flood the earth. It's never flooded before. Build an ark. It didn't take him 120 days. It took him 120 years, didn't it? And all his friends encouraged him on can you imagine go for it noah yeah i don't see that what are you crazy noah what's rain anyhow How, where did you even come up with that word what is it can you imagine that but he believed god and he took him at his word here's what i'm trying to say maybe poorly, is that no matter how we feel, what's the Bible say? What's the Word of God say? No, no, no matter what we're thinking, believe the Word of God, not what I'm thinking, not what I'm feeling, but believe His Word. Can I tell you what I've learned in life? I'm going to tell you anyhow, even if you say no. <laughs> I believe with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my strength, that God wants me to learn that I can lean on Him, and that I can trust Him, and take Him at His word. And that's what it's all about. 
I go through desert places. I go through wilderness. I go through mountaintop experiences. I go through valleys. And I go through all these things in life. And the one thing I've learned is I can depend on God. I know there's one person I cannot depend on, and that's me. But I can depend on God. I'll fall flat on my face and scrape my knees. But God will pick me up and say, I'm right here. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll look at the storms in life and I'll get afraid and I'll start to panic. And God will reach out his hand and say, come on, son. Let me pick you up. Let me pick you up. And when they got back in the boat, the water, the storm ceased. Let, let, let me tell you this morning, no, no matter what goes on, keep your focus on God. Keep your focus on Christ. Keep your focus on the Word of God. Isaiah 41, 17. Well, let's start at verse 10. We're not going to read it all. Verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed. I am thy God. And I will strengthen thee, and I will help thee, and I will uphold thee and with the right hand of my righteousness. What's that tell you? Okay, I'm going through a desert place. I'm going through this dry place. Life makes no sense. Life is crazy. Everything's upside down. Everything's whacked out. God, you said you're with me. You told me not to be afraid. But God, I'm scared to death. I don't know what step to take next. And God said, I'll uphold you. I'll strengthen you. I'll be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will not leave you in a desolate place like you think I'm going to. I will call you out of that place and I will restore you and renew you and fix you better than you ever were, better than you could ever imagine. I'll put things in your life that when Job came out, and, and I'm going to say this, when Job came out of his trial, he had seven times more than he had going into it. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we go into a fire. God said, I chose you out of the fire of affliction, not to leave you the same, but I'll make you better. And sometimes we go through these things and we need to lean on God and we need to learn to depend on Him that He's going to make us better. We don't know how. We don't see it. We thought we were pretty good to begin with. And God said, oh, you don't even know what I got planned for you. Depend on me. Trust me. Verse 17, Isaiah 41, says, When the poor and the needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst. Have you ever been there? You seek for something, you seek for, for help, you seek for, for something that will satisfy you just a little bit. You're poor and you're not broke and, and living on the street. It's not talking about that. It's talking poor and needy in spirit and, and, and poor and needy in, in your flesh. And you, you just need something, but you can't do it. You're, you're poor, but you don't know where to look. And you, you, you just, you look for water and you, you find you, you know those, what are they called, mirages? It looks like there's water out there, but all it is is sand, more desert, more heat, more dryness, more of not God. <laughs> I don't know, have, have you ever felt that way? And God said, I got an oasis for you that'll blow your mind. And when the poor and the needy seek water, and there is none, and they're tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will heal, hear them, and I, the God of Israel, will not, will not forsake them. I, I don't know how that makes you feel this morning, but it gives me confidence that when I'm in a dry place, when I'm in a thirsty place, when I'm in a place where I don't know if God knows where I'm at, it gives me confidence to know that God knows exactly where I'm at. He knows exactly how I feel. And he knows exactly what I'm in need of. And he's more than willing to supply it. 
whether it be shoes, food, or water, or light, understanding the path to take. God will make sure that we have everything necessary in our life to follow him all the days of our life. Psalms 119, 89 through 90 says, Forever, Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established earth and it abides. It's not a matter of me. It's not a matter of how I feel. It's a matter of the word of God is settled, period. Not one jot, not one tittle. If God said it, we can trust it and rest assured. It'll come to pass. Mm, uh, but I don't have that kind of time. I wanted it to happen yesterday. Now, well, maybe it'll happen next week. But trust me, his word will stand forever. It does not change. And it always comes right in the nick of time. When you think it's time to give up, God will say, take one more step. Trust me. You see, the grass withers and the flower fades. Let me put that in a little bit of Rick's brain thinking. My life fades away. All the good I've done, all the beauty that I am, withers away. I got a new one. We're deflating. We're not sagging. We're just deflating. You know, like an old balloon with, filled with helium. It just deflates, and then it comes down. But I don't care. I've been young, and I've, now I'm deflating. <laughs> I've learned one thing. That God's word never fails. God's word is true. God's word endures forever. God's word is established forever. And his word, Isaiah 40 verse 8, the word of our God shall stand until I get old. No, it doesn't say that. It says it'll stand forever. I, I was thinking about you know, you know, the Bible says that we're one of another. And sometimes I need help. What's the hardest thing for you to do? Look, it's all quiet. What's this crazy man going to say now? Isn't it hard to ask for help? Right? Even God's help. Sometimes we're quick quick to question God, but sometimes it's hard to say, God, I need help. I can't do this on my own. I, you need to help me, God, right here, or I'm going to say something I should not have say. All right? Or I'm going to do something I know I shouldn't do, but I'm, God, I need help. And all of a sudden, a scripture will come to your heart. Or, or, or maybe a message that Pastor Harper taught will come to your mind and say, oh yeah, he just taught that. Pay attention, not for my sake, for your sake. Because I'll tell you what I've learned so many times, right or wrong. I've learned that the word of God comes forth just before I need it. And just when I need it, all I have to do is remember, and, and God brings it back to my memory. Oh, Brother Harper just preached that. <clears throat> now I know what to do. Now I know what to do. Here, here's what I'm saying. Two things we got to realize, and, and let me qualify this. Be careful who you talk to. Some people are, are PA systems. <laughs> They'll broadcast your problems all over the place. Some people will just pray about them and go on. Me? <laughs> You don't want to tell me a problem. Because it, it, for, I got a steel trap for a mine. Nothing comes in, nothing goes out. I can hear it, and five minutes later, I will absolutely forget it. 20 years from now, I'll remember it. <laughs> Isn't it strange how you can remember things that happened 20 years ago, but two minutes ago, it's like, what did Brother Harper just say? 
I'll remember in 10 years. <laughs> And, and so I, I, I've gotten in the habit that when I pray, when, when people tell me things, I pray right then and there. Because I know in five minutes I'm going to forget about it. I walked over and, and handed Brother Gerald because I knew and t I meant to give it to him in the fellowship hall and I forgot. And Sister Linda said, don't forget. I said, mm, I better do this now <laughs> because I'll forget. And sometimes that's how we are with God. We forget the goodness of God has done and all that he's done for us and all that he's helped us and all that he's moved in our life. And sometimes we forget and we say, hey, God, what, 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 what just happened here? And we look at God like things are falling apart and, and very often God might say things are coming together. Just let that peace go. I'm fixing this. Just let that branch fall off. It's no good for you. It's, it's sucking you dry. I just need you to let this new branch grow in your life. And, and sometimes we think that life is impossible and God's saying, no, it's possible. Just trust me. I'll lead you and guide you in the way you need to go. And just, just comfort yourselves. Edify yourselves. Strengthen yourselves. You, you know somebody that has a problem or a need or they're down, don't just walk by them and say, I never saw them. <laughs> just because you cross the street doesn't mean you didn't see them. <laughs> right? Just walk over to them and say, hey, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. You're, you've been on my heart. Is everything okay? I won't tell nobody. Because I'm not going to remember it anyhow. <laughs> but no one thing. My God said he'd help you. My God said he'd be with you. My God said he'd, he'd go before you. Can, can, can you imagine talking about the valley? <laughs> Were we? <laughs> Crossing the Red Sea with Moses and the water stacked up on either side? That had to be an experience. And they walked across on dry ground. And, and I'm sure they were all excited and happy about doing this. Right? Yeah, no, me either, sis. <laughs> they were nervous, I'm sure, to say the very least. And, and it wasn't until the very last of them got across to the other side that the waters fell and took care of the enemy. What, what, what am I saying? And, and, and let me close with this. God said, the word of God says that he'll never leave us or forsake us. No matter where we're at. We could be in a desert place. We could be in a mountain. We could be in the midst of the sea. Getting ready to look like it's going to overflow our lives and destroy us. And God said, just follow me. I'll be with you no matter what. Just follow me. And when we get to the other side, when we get to the other side, then the waters collapsed and didn't drown them, it drowned the enemy. I want you to know something. Whatever the enemy is, I don't care what the enemy is. I don't care if it's chains binding you, God said he'd break them. I don't care if it's sickness or disease, God said he'd fix them. I don't care if it, it looks like the plant is dried up and withered, God said he'd bring it back to life. I don't care where you've been or what you've done, and neither does God. Just don't stay there. Just don't stay there. Continue to follow God, and he'll lead you in a path of righteousness. He'll lead you in a path of godliness. He'll lead you in a path, a path that's holy and just and right if we follow him and not follow our own selves because my own self will get me in trouble. Can I get an amen with that? <laughs> but if I follow God, he'll get me out of trouble no matter what that trouble is. Trust and depend on him. Trust and depend on his word. Trust and depend on what he has for us and the fact that he loves us and he knows exactly what we need and he knows exactly where we're at. And if we have to endure, then endure. If we have to be patient, be patient. 
The Word of God doesn't always work overnight like we want it to. But I tell you of a truth that I've learned. The Word of God is right. And there's nothing more right than the Word of God. Pastor Harper.